Hi, I'm Didier. Welcome to the lab. Well, actually, I'm not at the lab. I'm still in Paris, but at home, like most of us. Uh, we are going to try to make the best of this situation, though, with uh, some home cocktails. And we'll be talking to Forrest Collins about that. Hi, Forrest. Hi, Didier. Thanks for having me on the show. So, you know, I mean, I know in the U.S. we kind of have this culture of uh, making cocktails at home. You know, everyone pretty much has a shaker. Uh, it's not so true in France. I know you do a lot of activities, you host uh, parties and stuff here. Uh, can you tell me more about that? Yeah, I've got a lot of experience with events and cocktails. I have a cocktail meetup group with about 1,300 members. We go out to bars or we do events in private uh, private venues. I spent some time running a private cocktail social club where we did events exclusively in private venues, apartments around Paris. I do a lot of home entertaining. I do a lot of cocktail hours, cocktail parties, dinners with cocktails. So I've got a lot of experience making cocktails for people at home. All right, so now let's say I want to make some cocktails at home. Um, what are the bare minimums I need as far as you know, glassware, tools, uh, bottles, ice? I think because we're in lockdown right now, I'm really thinking the basic basics you need. And the basics are alcohol and ice. You can't have cocktails without those two things. I think while we're in uh, lockdown, you can find an appropriate shaking, stirring, serving vessel with what's in your kitchen. Um, once we're no longer in lockdown, I really think to level up, your basic needs are your cocktail and your ice, uh, sorry, your alcohol and your ice. And then a shaker would be necessary. I recommend a three-piece shaker for the home bartender. Even though the pros generally use the two-piece, I think at home you don't need that speed that a two-piece allows for because you're not working in a high-volume bar, but you'll appreciate the practicality of a three-piece. Also, a bar spoon for measuring and stirring, a jigger for measuring, and a bottle of bitters would be good, either aromatic or orange, depending on which kind of cocktails you like to make. And then finally, I think that you need glasses that you can serve drinks up in, so glasses with a stem. You don't necessarily have to have that V shape martini classic glass. You can go for a Nick and Nora style or some other glass that's got a stem uh, so you're not holding it and, and warming up the cocktail. Uh, I know space is often an issue in Paris, so so you might want to look at something that can do double duty and not just serve as your cocktail glasses. Okay, and so as far as recipes, you know, what, what books do you recommend or websites? You know, I mean, I know I look at Giffords a lot, um, Class Magazine. I think you're absolutely right about Diffords. It's a great reference. Diffords and Class, they really know their stuff. I go to that site a lot if I just want a the a, a classic, co the standard cocktail recipe for a drink. I also really like Imbibe magazine. I gravitate towards the US Imbibe. There's also a U UK Imbibe. I like Punch Drinks. That's a really good magazine as well. I like Jeffrey Morgenthaler's blog. He's been in the industry forever. He's a real pro. He's got a lot of great advice. He also has a book out. So for sort of budding home bartenders, his book is a really, really good reference source. It gives you information on all the basics. So those are uh, sites that I refer to quite a bit. Uh, most of the books I use were books that were really very heavily referenced when I was coming up in cocktails. So I really like Ted Haig's Vintage Spirits and Forgotten Cocktails. I refer to the Savoy quite often. I live in France and I really like Fernando Castillon. So my sort of basic reference book is the La Russe Cocktails book, which he wrote. I also really like the books by Robert Simonson, who is a cocktail journalist. He's got one on the old fashioned. He's got one on the martini. They're well, they're well researched. If it's something you like reading about, then it's definitely worth checking those out. And so when you don't have the right ingredients, because, you know, there's a lot of recipes and a lot of different ingredients to choose from. Um, what are some substitutions that you end up having to do a lot? I think cocktails are made for substitution. I think that you don't need to get too precious about it and you can sub out base spirits in a lot of cocktails. The Old Fashioned is a classic example, so you don't have whiskey, make it with rum, make it with Calvados, make it with cognac. Um, even the, the sweetener element, it's easy to swap out, so if you don't have simple syrup and you don't wanna make it, try making your cocktail with agave or honey or maple syrup or some type of liqueur. Uh, with the citrus, it's a little bit trickier to swap out because they have different acidity levels, but it's possible. And really, this substitution is, is why we have certain modern classics. Even now, uh, take, for example, The Last Word, which is a very old cocktail. And, you know, a hundred years later, Philip Ward takes that recipe template, swaps the gin out with whiskey, swaps the citrus out, and now we have the final ward, which is a great classic cocktail, which is 
based on Oh, oh, sorry. It's a great modern classic based on a classic cocktail, just with a little bit of a, a little substitution. So people shouldn't be feel too precious about their cocktails, and and feel free to substitute and try something different. And so, okay, last question: When you are hosting a party with friends, so let's say I don't know if you have roommates at the time, or if you're in with your family, um, how do you juggle kind of making cocktails, serving cocktails to your friends, and you know? socializing as well because a lot of times I end up behind my counter and I'm um, just making cocktails for everyone and I can't really get away from that. Uh, do you have any tips or tricks? Okay, now you're talking about something that I really get excited about because I love home entertaining. I love making people cocktails at home and I've had to really learn that it's important to interact with your guests. While I want to make these fabulous drinks, guests are really there. They want to enjoy the drinks, but they really want to enjoy your company. So. It's really important to find ways to serve them nice things, but be able to spend time with them. So I've got four different things that I do when I have people around, not all at the same time, but different ways that you can do this. One thing I do is I make sure that there's something out that guests can serve themselves. So when I launch a new home seasonal cocktail menu, I'll invite people around to try it. I'll have them come in. I give them the menu to sort of look at, but on the coffee table, I will already have a tray of either a bottled cocktail like a Boulevardier or a Negroni, or I'll put out some different vermouths on the tray. I'll also put some flat, some sparkling water. I'll put some lemon or lime slices on there. I'll put some ice and some small glasses so I or my guests can serve themselves something while they're taking time to look at the cocktail menu and talk to me about it. They don't feel this pressure to order something quickly. I'm not jumping immediately into the kitchen or behind the bar to make something. So that's just kind of a nice uh, entry transition moment that I like to do sometimes. Another thing I'll do is if I've got 10 or more people coming over, it's pretty likely I'm going to do a punch bowl. So punch is great because you can make it really low octane. You can make it a little bit more powerful. You can do things that dress it up that are really easy, like freeze berries or edible flowers or uh, different fruits into the ice cubes that you put in the ice bowl. I got a really kind of cool vintage retro punch bowl off of eBay. It's a nice conversation point. People are gathered around the punch bowl. They're getting themselves drinks. It's really easy, fun way to serve a large crowd drinks. So there's the punch bowl. I also like batching and bottling cocktails. So in the summer, I'll do like a pitcher of margaritas on ice. And there's little things that you can do that make it a little bit more special, but not more work for you at the time that you're serving them while your guests are there. For example, you can uh, make some special salts. So throw a little bit of chili or a little bit of tagine in your salt and rim it with that, just dresses it up a little bit or swap out the tequila for mezcal just for a little bit of a twist that might surprise your guests but still be a classic that they can enjoy and you can still make it a big pitcher. In winter and fall months, I usually have a bottle of my house old fashioned variation and in the fridge. And again, I do something that's easy to do ahead of time, but you can add special little touches that make it really nice for your guests, but not more effort at the moment that they're there. So what I have in my fridge usually is, I call it fall fashioned, and it's an old fashioned made with Calvados. I throw in some barrel aged whiskey bitters. I throw in some maple syrup. I dilute it a bit, put pop it in the fridge. And then when guests get there, I serve it to them over a smoked ice cube. And again, that's something that you can do ahead of time. I make mine with a smoking gun, but you can also do the quick and dirty easy way, which is just drop a little bit of liquid smoke into your ice cube trays, make them ahead of time, keep them in your freezer in a Ziploc bag so they don't make the rest of the things in your freezer smell like smoked ice. And, um, and then serve that when your guests get there, express a little lemon peel over the top to brighten it up. It's really fast and easy and your guests feel like they've got something that's special and different and you know not just a glass of wine. The final thing I do is I like to make cocktails that are big and take a while to drink because sometimes when I have eight people over, by the time I've made the eighth cocktail, person number one is ready for another one. So in the summer, I usually come up with menus that are piscine style drinks, which are cocktails served in in the big wine balloon glasses. So think like you might see an Aperol spritz done this way or the Spanish gin tonic uh, serving style. And so I'll make a whole menu of these. And basically you want to think alcohol and things that are bubbly 
and uh, low alcohol or no alcohol to mix with them. So I'll do Susan tonic. I'll do gin and tonic. I will do uh, an Aperol spritz. I will do uh, what I call a light, light and stormy, which is basically a dark and stormy, but lengthened with a little sparkling wine. Uh, you can do wine spritzers. There's lots of things. You just want to put that alcohol, lots of lengthener and lots of ice in your big, big wine glass. And then it's, you can also garnish that up with fun stuff. So people like it. It's refreshing. It feels a little festive and it takes longer to drink. So you can all sit around for quite a bit of time sipping on your piscine style glasses. This is, oh, the, when I do the, the, that menu around my house for cocktails, it's always a, a popular one because people seem to really enjoy it for some reason. So I think there's a lot of ways to, with a little forethought, make it easier to serve good cocktails to your guests and not spend all your time behind the bar because that's not what they come for. All right, well, thanks a lot for your input. Thanks for your help, Forrest. Thanks for having me on the show and hopefully I'll see you in Paris soon. You know, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, follow us for more, and we'll see you next time.